everybody for your warm welcome uh, and thank you for the gift I was telling uh, my brother Stephen that I'll be back in the second service for another gift <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to encourage my fellow fathers who are here that we need to appreciate who we are as fathers not to complain although it's not easy but we need to appreciate I'm a blessed father of two children, two wonderful children, a son, Enoch. He'll be 25 in October. And a daughter who will be 21 next Saturday. She'll be here in the second service. And when people look at me, they think I'm only 30 or 20, so <laughs> it's good to keep that way. Uh, greetings from my wife, Faith. She's back in Africa, sends her greetings, and also greetings from Dr. Aline. She called last night to say hello, and uh, Dr. Aline, and uh, my colleagues. Uh, they've been here before, Dr. Eloge and Aline. Burundian who studied in China, they became born again in China, <laughs> baptized in the bathroom in China and got married in China. They knew each other in China, so it's a place of blessing. I once heard a story about um, a father who was complaining and say, God, why did you make me a man? Why did you make me a father? You know, I work hard. I have to provide for my children, for my family, for my wife and everybody. And I uh, bring the money and she's always at home playing with the kids enjoying herself, spending my money, Lord, <laughs> make, me, make me her so she can become me. Just, God, give me a chance to relax like her and so she can feel how painful this role of a father is. So God granted him his request and he became the mother. So he woke up in the morning, he had to prepare for breakfast for him. And uh, he had to prepare the kids, he had to take the kids to school, go back to bring them back home and go to the market, wash the clothes, do the cooking, wash the, everything they need to wash at home. And, and uh, he, you know, he became she. So he did all everything, everything, everything. He fulfilled even the marital roles in the late in the night. And uh, so the next morning he was really sorry. He said, Lord, I didn't know that she, she suffered this much. Lord, make me a man again. Lord. And God said, well, this time I'm not going to grant you your request because you are now pregnant so you have <laughs> you have to wait for nine months before you become a so we want to appreciate you fathers and mothers and mother please mothers and sisters and wives and thank you help us to fulfill that role and uh, to appreciate who we are in God <laughs> Uh, so you don't have to wait until nine months finish. And we want to thank you for praying for Burundi, for Africa. As some of you are following on the news, Burundi is about to get into elections, so it's very hot. Please pray for us. Actually, the elections are scheduled for Monday, but they've been pushing, postponing because there are great tension there. So please continue to pray for us. Uh, the text we are reading from today, this morning, is from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. It says, uh, 
I'm reading from the NIV, the New International Version. As I said last Sunday, please forgive, please bear with me. English is our last language. Burundi is a French-speaking country, so I'm trying my best. If I get stuck, I'll speak in tongues, and then uh, they always feel interpret for you. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 1 to 5, it says, At that time, the Lord said to me, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first one and come up on the mountain. Also make a wooden ark. I write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Then you are to put them in the ark. So I made the ark out of the acacia wood and chiseled, chiseled out or cut out two stone tablets like the first one. And I went up on the mountain with the two tablets in my hands. The Lord wrote on these tablets what he had written before. The Ten Commandments he had proclaimed to you on the mountain, out of the fire, on the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Then I came back down the mountain. I came, down, I came back down the mountain and put the tablet in the ark I had made, or the box I have made, as the Lord commanded me, and they are there now. Amen to the word. The word um, the Lord put on my heart to share with you is this. God wants you back at the top. Amen? Amen. Will you tell your neighbor, God wants you back at the top. The Bible says... Um, when we read this scripture, it says, at that time, which time? This is a time when Moses have, if I could say, he has brought it up. Moses has gone to the mountain when you read Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 31, chapter 32. It tells us the story how Moses went up to the mountain to receive the Lord's commandment, the Lord's law for his people. They have, been, they have just come out of slavery. They were slaves. They were people who were not well organized. They just walked under other people. So he got out of slavery, but now he wanted to walk with them in a proper way. So he said, Let's, let us have like a contract. This is what you should do. This is what you should not do. And I'll be your God. I promise you, I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll do. If you obey, if you follow this, I'll make you the head, not the tail. Hallelujah. So they came to a place where they had to have that agreement. So God asked their representative, Moses, the leader, the pastor, the father of that assembly, he asked him to come up at the mountain, at the top. So he went there, spent 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of God. What a beautiful experience. I mean, when you spend only one hour in the worship, you just feel wonderful. When you spend few minutes in the word, you feel wonderful. In the fellowship of the brethren, of the beloved, of the saints, you feel wonderful. But this Moses, he wasn't an hour. It wasn't a day. It wasn't only a night. It was a day and a night. But not only a day, not only two days, not only a week, but 40 days and 40 nights in a fellowship with God face to face. Can you imagine? It was beautiful. So after that fellowship, after that talk, after that meeting, 
God wrote something and gave to him. He said, this is our meeting minutes. <laughs> this is what has come out of our talk. It was on tablets of stone. He gave to him. So Moses received it and he was happy. But before he goes, God said to him, by the way, that chart down there, that people of yours, that family, that assembly, that, those people whom you brought from Egypt, they have backslidden. They have turned their, back, their heart against me. They are back against me. They are now worshipping other gods. So I'm going to kill them. I'm going to finish them, but for you I'll give you a new group. And I'll give you a name. Oh, you be blessed. Moses said, no, Lord, people will laugh at you. He reasoned God. He said, listen, people say that you are not able to transport them up to the end. You keep them on the way. So God said, oh, yeah, I've heard you. <laughs> I've changed. So Moses went down happy with the tablets of stone. He gets down at the valley and then he heard this noise. He saw what they are doing. They are worshipping a golden calf, an idol. Oh, you are our God. You are the one who brought us from Egypt. The same Moses was at the top who was reasoning God, telling him to cool down, to be patient with his people. Something rose out of him. Oh. I mean, he didn't know what happened. The tablets of stone were thrown down. He threw them down. He broke them. The work of God of 40 days and 40 nights became a powder in a few seconds. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You've been working on a computer, you've been designing something, and then your child comes in, or your, you know, you're about to save it. As he plays with the cable, it just, oh, he approved the cable and you lose the whole work. You've been working on day and night. The child feels sorry, but you've lost it. The father feels angry, or the mother feels angry, or whoever, the uncle, the aunt, but it's gone. So this is where this verse comes. At that time, the Lord told me, come up again. Hallelujah. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know where you are. But allow me to say this. God is calling you back at the top. Amen. You may have ruined it. You may have done it in a wrong way or you've come short. You've done it well, but you, did, you wanted to do it much better, but you feel something is missing. God is calling you back at the top. He's giving you a second chance. So some of us is giving us the third, the hundredth time chance. But no matter the chance, God is giving you another chance. Why am I saying the second or the third? For Moses, this was another time. Remember, when he was in Egypt, he killed an Egyptian, he ran away, and God gave him a chance to do what he has purpose to do in his heart, to, to take out the people out of slavery. God gave him a chance. He used him. The same man who was a murderer, who killed the Egyptian, he was the same man God used to be a deliverer. Hallelujah. But this time again, God gave him a chance, and he blew it. But God came to the same Moses, this God, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, 
that our Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and, for, and forever. So he never changed. He can change situation. He can change you, but he never changed. So he is willing to bring you up. To bring, he's calling you up the top. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God wants you back at the top. When? In that time. At that time. Where you are right now. Some of us are saying, well, I wish everything would be okay, then I can go up. Moses was kind of depressed. He was feeling condemned. He was feeling rejected by his own people. But also, he felt this, he has disappointed the God who trusted him with his own work. But at that time, down in the valley, the voice of God came and said, come up. I want you to come. He didn't want him to come only up at the mountain, but he said, now I want to associate you. Hallelujah. I want to associate you. How? You go and make, I give you the right to copy. This is what the meaning of copyright. <laughs> I'm giving you the copyright. Remember, I made the stone, but this time I'm giving you the copyright. Go and make a copy. Go and do. Do the same. Yes, some people can start speculating and say, yes, we have a saying in French, qui casse pay. He who breaks is the one who pays. It's like saying, you know, you broke them, you go and make them. We can take that side, but we can also take another side. It's not making pain, but he's associating him. Not only I'm calling you again to the top, but this time I want you to walk with me. You go and make these stones. Moses, I'm giving you the right to copy. Copy me. Hallelujah. And he did. And God said to him, to show you that I approve you, to show you that I'm giving you a second chance, to show you that I'm associating you, what those stones you are going to make, I, the Lord, am going to write on them. I'm going to put my signature on it. Hallelujah. And I'm not, I'm not going to write anything else. I'm going to write the same words. Hallelujah. The same words, words which were on this, those stones. In other words, yes, you have broken these stones. These are new, but my words stand forever. My plan for you has never changed. My plans have never changed. Moses, you may bring me new stones. You may bring me stones from the valley which I didn't use what I gave you were from heaven or from the top. But I promise you, I'm going to put my signature. Whoever will see it is not going to see you, but will see my hand. Hallelujah. God is want to put his hand on your family, on your business, on your life because he's calling you back to at the top. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, friends. So Moses went up with the two tablets of stone and God did what he did. And Moses came down. He went down at the valley. He went back to the valley. But with the top mountain experience in his heart. With a changed heart. He wasn't the same Moses who went up. He was a different Moses. Why God is calling you up at the mountain? At the top? Why God wants you back at the top? Why? You know why? Because that's where you belong. Tell your neighbor you belong at the top. 
This is why God's people, this is why God's people, we need to, to, to cultivate that spirit of ex excellency. Always be at the top. Whatever you do, don't do it with med mediocrity or don't do it halfway. Do it in a good way. Do it well. Because we serve an excellent God. We are presenting Him. Glory to God. Amen. That's where you belong. He wants you back. When He created Adam and Eve, He wanted them to be at the top. But they ruined it. They broke it. But God has been making a way to get them back. So through the second Adam, who is Jesus, you and me were brought back to the top. This is what the Bible says in Colossians 3, from verse 1. Now that you've been raised up with him, seek those things which are above. Tell your neighbor, that's where you belong. You belong at the top. Somebody said to me one day, he said, top, you know the meaning of top? I say, yes, yeah, being, uh, he said, no. He said to me, top is trust, obey, and walk in purity. Learn to trust the Lord, learn to obey him, and walk in purity. You'll be at the top. That's where you belong. Why? Why does he want you back at the top? Because it is his divine plan. He's the one who chose that Adam and Eve will be at the top. You know, he created the mountains. He created the sea, the oceans, the lake, the rivers. The streams, he created the orphan, uh, the elephant. Yes, the orphans also are created by God. <laughs> they are not created as orphans, but, but they are also God's creation. He created the elephant, the giraffe, the big animals, the small one, the birds, those who crawl down. He created the trees. He created all these amazing creation we see. By the end, he created you and me. We're supposed to be the last. But he said, you, you are going to take care of all this. You're going to rule, to dominate, to, to help it grow. I trust you. You came late, but I want you to be the top. That is his divine plan. His plan is for you to be the head, not the tail. Above, not beneath. Why does he want you back at the top? Because of what Christ did at the cross. He brought us back home. We may look poor. We may look Seek, but deep within, we are always at the top. I was listening at the news yesterday, a journalist, I think, was in yesterday or a night before, a journalist from BBC, yeah, a night before, saying uh, about the shooting in South Carolina in America. He said, there's something amazing with these people of faith. I don't know if you followed it. He said, they have a way of standing strong in the midst of unbelievable situation. I was blessed. He's not a believer. He may be a, a believer, but he didn't want to show that, uh, that he's a believer. But he, he was touched, he was challenged by these people who were supposed to be down crushed by the loss of their loved ones. Forgiving? They were forgiving? Why? Because they are, they are at the top. 
welcoming this young man at the Bible study. <laughs> why? Because they are at the top. This is why you don't just follow whatever comes. Oh, if you do this, I'll give you that. You know, I don't know about here, back home. Young ladies, for you to get a job, sometimes they say, why well, if you don't sleep with me, you won't get this job. Don't allow that. Because you are the top. Don't cheat in school because you are the top. Don't do your job in a wrong way. Don't say because they don't pay me much. Uh, this, this is why Joseph, this is why Joseph stayed at the top. His ma the boss's wife. She said, come and sleep with me. Then you become, he said, no, no. I may look small, I may look poor, I may look as your servant, but I'm somewhere. I operate from somewhere. I may be digging your garden, but I'm somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you are somewhere. You are at the top. You are at the top. God wants you and me back at the top. God wants you and me back at the top. This is why we preach the gospel. We want, we want people to come back home. We want them to come back to where they deserve. They don't, they don't deserve in prost prostitution. They don't deserve in sin, to be in sin and all the rubbish they live in. They think that's, that's you know, they're clever. They need to know where they belong. So once you know this, once you have this information, you have to do something. Moses he could have decided to stay there. When God said, come up, he said, no, 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 no. I've ruined it. I don't deserve. I'm, I'm not worth. God find somebody else. Maybe I'll send Joshua. He's much quiet and peaceful. He's a good disciple. For me, I'm just unpredictable. <laughs> I may disappoint you again, Lord. You know, get somebody. Get somebody, Lord. But he went up. He went up. You need to respond. God did his part. We need to do our part. Otherwise, he'll just stay the way it is. You can rejoice. Oh, yes, God is giving us a second chance. Oh, hallelujah. That's one thing. But do something to prove that you have... You are agreeing. You are responding to the call. Come up. Come up. Yes. God's desire must become yours too. You must be willing. Moses could have done it like he did the, last, the first time when God said, come, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. He said, you know, I don't know how to speak. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounds familiar to some of us. Yes. Only in Morocco for you it's okay. When God say, come, you just come. Hallelujah. You must purpose in your heart. And you must act in obedience. This is what helped the prodigal son. The prodigal son, he purpose in his heart. He say, I know my father. He's good. I'm going back. I know he'll make me somebody. Even if he make me he, one of his low, low worker, I know he'll make me. 
a different person than this. You need to purpose in your heart. The Bible says, then I went up. Moses, he said, then I went up. That means he did something. He acted in obedience to the call. The oldies come with the church heart, repented. You know, God is willing to take us there. Not only to take us there, but He's willing to go with us all the way. And He's willing to walk with us. But we need to deal with some of these issues. Moses had a problem. Moses was suffering. You know which problem Moses had? You don't know? Huh? But let's, let's interact. Moses had some problem. You know one of them which really was up than the others? Yeah? Yeah? He didn't know a problem Moses had, a personal problem? Hmm? Stammering, that's one of them, but that's not a big problem. Hmm? Impulsive? Yes. The man was very angry. For you are good. I like you people. You're so quiet, sir. <laughs> you never shout to one another. You always talk good. <laughs> and Moses. Uh, And it's amazing when you read the Bible. I come to a place where I think this thing can become even hereditary. <laughs> you know, it's strange. I try to play some. Because this man, he killed an Egyptian. He goes out. He found an Egyptian mistreating a Jew, a Hebrew. He killed him immediately. No preparation, no seminary, no conference. The man is dead, he's squished, he's buried. He goes up, he meet God, 40 days, 40 nights of glory, he comes down, he throw it down. The man takes everybody to the promised land. He's just a few kilometers away. I mean, he can see the land. And God say, you give them the water from the rock just speak to the just speak to the rock and he gets out with his <laughs> you people terrible people do you think I'm the one to and you know what he lost all his work of 40 years he didn't go into the promised land because of this. We need to work on this. Yes, God is giving you a second chance. He's giving me a second chance. But let me tell you, it's not going to be like that all the time. We need to be careful. God gave him a chance, another chance. But there was a time he said, please God, allow me just to put a foot there. I said, no way. No way. And the amazing, I mean, we need to face this thing. Call it white or call it black. You need to call it by name. Touch it and say, Lord, this is my problem. What amazed me with this story of Moses, it was written by Moses. Did you know that? The book of Exodus was written by Moses. Deuteronomy was written by Moses. Numbers. Leviticus, Genesis, the first five books of the Bible were written by Moses. I mean, I don't know ab about you. I haven't written a book myself. But I know when we write about our biography and our books, we write the best. What we've achieved. The man has written what he has destroyed himself. 
This is amazing. This is, a, this is why the Bible calls him in the book of Numbers chapter 12 verse 3. He was the meekest person on the face of the earth. And this is what blessed me. The man of, who is impulsive, full of anger, who doesn't control his anger, the Bible calls him the meekest person on the face of the earth. This is what Pastor Rene was saying last Sunday. Whose report will you believe? I can sit down and say, I know I'm a knob thing. <laughs> or I can say, this is what the Lord calls me. And I should walk in it. Yes, I'm not yet there yet. But by God's help, by God's word, I'll go there. Because when you read, it's very scary. I, I mean, I was telling you, it looked like it's a family issue. When you read in Genesis chapter 40, let me check it. It wasn't here, but it just dropped in my mind. Genesis chapter 40, remember the story of Jacob blessing his children. Chapter 47, I think. Yeah, Genesis chapter 47, verse... Uh, oh, let me quickly, time is flying. Who remember where he was blessing his children? Is it 47 or 49? Yeah, 49, 49. Genesis 49. He comes to, to verse 5. This is Jacob speaking prophetically about Simeon and Levi. He says, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are weapons of violence. Let me not enter, let, let me not enter their council. Let me not join their assembly. For they have, they have killed men in their anger and hamstrung oxen as they are pleased. As they pleased. Cursed be their anger. That's verse 7. Cursed be their anger, so fierce, and their fury, so cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them in Israel. So this is talking about the family of Simeon and Levi. And if you know Bible history or if you have read it, the story of Moses starts with there was a man from the family of Levi he went and got married to a woman from a family of Levi. So if this anger is in the father and also the mother, Moses, poor Moses, he carried double anger <laughs> in his germ. He couldn't control. But the Bible calls him the gentle and humble man on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. But we need to deal with it. We need to call to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. You know your weakness. I know my weakness. I know where I've ruined it. And still do. <laughs> but God is gracious to take me back at the top. And is gracious to take you back at the top. I want to encourage you. God wants to take you God wants to carry you back on the wings of his spirit by the power of his word. He has helped the prodigal son to come back home. God wants you back. Let me finish with this testimony. There was a young man. He gave his heart to the Lord. Then he turned back to the away. He turned away and he went into the rebel movement in our country 20 years ago. And uh, so because he understood the things of God, or oh, he's been in the church before, they used him to come and attack our meetings because the witch doctors were telling them that if they don't stop this prayer movement, they will never capture the city. We were organizing three days every month from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., bringing brothers from different churches for prayer for our nation. It was in 94. 
So the young man came in the meeting around, uh, around 10 a.m. He got in the meeting, he fell asleep. 11, 12, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. He still has deep, deep asleep. I mean, this meeting is crazy. I mean, you people are so good and quiet. Africans, they can be noisy. Oof. Their prayer meeting is crazy. I mean, beating drums, running up and down. And the guy is fast asleep. At 5.30, we are calling people, giving them chance, those who want to give their heart to the Lord. Because there are people coming in and out, joining us as we pray for the nation. So we say we are not going to finish the meeting without giving chance people to give their heart to the Lord. So we, we gave them chance and the guy woke up and ran in front to give his heart to the Lord. <laughs> so he gave his heart to the Lord, but he started sh shouting to my colleague as I was closing the meeting. He said, please forgive me. So he said, what did you do? He said, just forgive me. He said, what did you do? I said, forgive me. <laughs> he said, what did you do? Yes, I'm willing to forgive you, but what for? <laughs> so he told him the whole story. He showed him a grenade and a pistol. He was going to throw the grenade, and whoever tried to run, he shot. He went back to report to his boss. Of course, he gave us his weapons, we gave it to some army officers and they, he went back to his people and they put him in jail, in his rebel cell and they say, no, they gave you money, that's why you didn't do what we asked you to do. So they sent his boss to do the same and he was met with the power of God, he ran away and he said, these people are using terrible power of witchcraft. That's us. But uh, this young man went back again. He started doing the wrong thing again. We lost, tra we lost track. We didn't know where he was. I went to jail to preach, and he was there. I didn't know he was there. He gave his heart to the Lord. He said he cried for three days. I didn't know that he was there. He told me this after he's come out of jail. He said, I cried for three days. I was hard, I was terrible, but I cried. I was beating other prisoners, other inmates. He was sentenced for 20 years. He got released after 10 years. He came and stayed with us. Now he's my driver. He's in the one for the last 10 years, and he's the one who helps with the security and so on. He's got his own business. He has a car rental business. He has got three cars. I say, you go and do your business. He said, no, 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 I'll stay with you. He stay with me. He just decided to be my driver, you know. He say, you've allowed me to have the second chance. I know where I belong now. I'll never go back to this nonsense. And he's bringing many, many, many. Now he's married, he's a father of two children. Let me tell you, I don't know which level you've gone to. God wants you and me back at the top. Amen. Shall we pray? <coughs> father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. What a wonderful and faithful God we have. Father, we thank you for who you are. You know who we are, but still you love us. We've disappointed you many times, but you still call us back at the top. Help us to walk with you, Lord. Help us to serve you. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse us from all filth, from all anger, from all unrighteousness. Help the fathers, the mothers, the 
the younger ones, the single ones. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We want to please you. We want to come up again. We want to keep the top experience in our heart. Help us, Lord, as we walk with you, as we want to represent you wherever we are. Let us bring the light. Let us bring the joy. Let us bring order wherever we go. Seeds of righteousness. Oh Lord, let us be instrument of the kingdom of God. You've helped Moses. You can help me. You can help my brothers and sisters. We commit our life into your hand. Take us on. In Jesus' name we pray. As we were praying, I feel there's a, a parent here. You've lost a child through suicide. Or you have a member in the family who went away and you feel ashamed of that. You feel you've never been there for him or for her. God is giving you a second chance. Give it to him. Don't stay in that spirit of condemnation and heaviness. God wants to take you to another level. There's also a sister here. You are struggling with some allergies. They come almost every three months. There are allergies on your skins. They are like chronic disease. May the Holy Spirit heal you completely today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Pastor.